In the previous lesson, we talked about Hive and what it is and, and conceptually how it works. But let's actually use it and see it in action. It'll make more sense. So as we said, Hive is a tool that puts kind of a SQL layer on top of the files that are stored in the Hadoop HDFS. Well, let's take a look at that. So if I go to my HDFS file system, in the last demo, we created a table within the Hive warehouse folder called words by book. So in this words by book folder we have one or more files that look like this one and they have a consistent format and we're really going to need that in order to use Hive. But we used MapReduce in order to create this format so we're okay. The first field in this table has a text file, the, the file that this book actually came from. The second has a word and the third has how many times that occurred. So if I scroll through here I have a lot of ones and whatnot. I might want to query this out and get only those things that had a lot of occurrences like IT, X, IT apostrophe S has a lot of occurrences for example. So let's go ahead and make a Hive table on top of that. We're going to use a Hive command that I'll show you just so we know what that looks like. If I go to my sample code that I have in various places here. So here's the command we're going to use, and it's create external table word list. Hive can be used against files that are on the local file system, in which case you would leave off the word external. When we say external, we mean on HDFS. So we're saying create a table called word list using data that's in HDFS, and we're telling it what the structure is. We're telling it that the rows are delimited, the fields are terminated by a tab character, and the location, and this location refers to HDFS as in user Hive warehouse words by book, which is what we just looked at. What Hive will do is it will create some metadata that just describes what the layout is, means when it brings data in from this folder. So I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. And start a command prompt. There are GUI tools to do this as well, but this is the basic level down here. So I get a Hive prompt and first thing I'm going to do is put in a command show tables. I want to see what tables I have in Hive. And on this Hive instance I have none. So I'm going to create a table by pasting in that command. And notice that took 0.6 seconds. So it's very fast. It didn't actually move any data. It just created the metadata. Now if I use the show tables command I have word list. And in order to query that, I'm actually going to run another command, which is here. So I'm going to tell it I want to select the word and the count from word list, group by word having count greater than 2. So well, let's make that greater than, let's say, 20. So I'm going to list out the occurrences of all words that have more than 20 occurrences. So back to terminal, I'll paste in that query. And notice what's happening here. So there's a MapReduce job that's been created and is running. There's a tracker for that. So if I went back to my running jobs, I would actually see that there's that query is running. In my tracking URL, I could track how that query is going. So even though I'm running what looks to me to be a query, I'm actually running a MapReduce job. And here I have all of the words that occurred within all the books more than 20 times. So that's, I think, a very concrete example of how, yes, we do have this unstructured and MapReduce thing going on in the background, but in the foreground we can make it look just like the normal SQL experience we want, except here we can be querying potentially many, many terabytes of data stored in a distributed cluster.